Welcome to this tutorial about tags. Let's just jump into it and talk a little bit about it. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. This works just as fine in Unreal Engine 4 if you want to follow along today. Now, what are tags? Well, tags is a way for you to mark up objects in your environment in such a way that you can have uh, gameplay logic react to it. So to demonstrate, let's take our third person character over here and we'll edit him. We'll dock his blueprint up here. So a tag exists or can exist on any actor in the world. Uh, so if we have a third person character here marked, for example, and we go to the search tab in here and we type in tag, you can see that we get something called uh, tag uh, for actor. Now, while we still have this search bar uh, searching for tag, we can click for something else like the mesh. And you can see that it changes from uh, component tags. So depending on what you have selected, a component or a, an actor, it will say different things. So uh, with that in mind, what you can do is you can make use of this to either have actors tagged or you can have components tagged. And it's very easy to add a tag. All you have to do is type the plus sign over here and you can type in something like uh, enemy, for example. Now, how is this useful? Well, let's take a very simple test case here and we'll say uh, we add an input just so we have something to simulate a reaction or something happening in the world. So when we press the E key, something is happening. And what we can do then is we can right click and we can uh, type in tag and you'll get a bunch of different things here. The ones that are most interesting for us today will be something like um, the add actor and tag. So you can see actor has tag. Uh, so if we were to, to add a branch to this, we could hook the branch up here. We could have the input from the event go into the branch. And we could say uh, we want to print something. So we can say that the print here says true. And this one says false. And in here we assign whatever tag we want to check against. So if we type in enemy, for example, and then compile and then check against this, we make sure that we have the same spelling and we run. And then I press E, you can see that it says true. If I were to type in something else here, like friend you can see that it says false so what it is doing is uh, when we're pressing e it's checking if this actor has in it a tag of the matching description here uh, and it's checking against if you go and type in get tag might be even get tags yes get the tags so this is the um, the array that it will be contained in or the, the variable. So it will check if this, this function will check if, it, if this specific uh, variable contains this specific tag and then it will return an output for you. So how can this be useful? Well, uh, in, in the same way that we have interfaces to avoid casting to different objects because they might not have a uh, a common hereditary tree in form of inheritance. They might not have a common base class uh, high up. Um, we might want to use tags because one of the things that people tend to use is when they want to find a specific class for something, and we've done this in tutorials earlier, we can get actor of class like this, and we can get a specific class actor. Uh, but what if you're looking for different classes in different types of game modes or on different levels or under any other circumstances you want to check for different things but you want to act upon them in the same way well we can just do a get actor by tag 
and then you can type in whatever tag you want to have here. So if you wanted to have enemy here, then this third person character would end up as the result out here, just like it would in this node. So if you have um, a bunch of different blueprint actors, then you can add the tag to them instead and find them through this way if this is not a very uh, convenient way for you to get that information. And you can be pretty creative about the tags. You can do all kinds of logic with it. Uh, you can have something like uh, determining teams if you wanted to and then just swap those out in runtime if you wanted them to have uh, to move to different teams for example you can have the the tag as an identifier if someone is supposed to be um, be able to to damage for example now that specific case might make more sense to have an interface for uh, but these are just examples the, the the downside of having tags is that you have to add this to all the blueprints that are interesting for you and you have to maintain them. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about what kind of usable usability scenarios you, you could actually have for your tags. Now, by the same measure that you might want to have certain blueprints or actors in the world having certain tags so you can work with them in certain ways, you might also want to have it on components for different reasons. Um, you can have, for example, if we go to this mesh again and we add a tag and we'll say uh, mesh tag, what we can do is we can go and have some functionality again. And instead of this one, we can have, let's type in a component tag. Then you can see you can get components by tag for example so then you can have let's say we had five different components inside of here and three of them were interesting to us in some way maybe uh, they were certain uh, meshes that we wanted to enable physics on for example but two of them we did not want to enable physics simulation then we can have the actor here which is our uh, blueprint as self and we can ask for a component type if we wanted to uh, so now it's defaulting to actor component so uh, anything that's an actor component here would would fit and then if we put in um, mesh tag for example or not for example as our example then this is what it would be looking for so if we were to add some logic to this, let's just add something simple like a for loop for this and we'll hook up this node here. So when we press E, we're going to go through the loop of all the results over here that are matching this mesh tag. And then we'll just print out a hello for that. We compile and we run. You can see it types out hello every time I press the button. Uh, so if we were to now add this to a camera boom and say that this was also a mesh tag or had a mesh tag for some reason and now when we play you can see it will type out hello twice every time because it's finding both of these components in the actor which has this tag so uh, by using these different uh, nodes you can actually then uh, find components and actors that are interesting for your logic to act upon in a certain way and the positive thing about this is that comparisons for tag can be very cheap in performance and also um, that you can have the benefit of having very different objects share tags and then share uh, functionality because of that uh, similar to interfaces uh, I hope that made sense and I hope that that gets your creative juices flowing so that you're thinking about cool ways to make use of this. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.